Doctors recommend that heart failure patients eat less salt, but less than half of patients do it. A new study by the UK College of Nursing is using electronic salt spoons and mini iPads to help patients reduce salt intake. We teach them how to read the food labeling and uh, we teach them how to cook the raw salt food. Still, we cannot figure out the hidden salt uh, very exactly. This device can actually detect the salt amount in the food a very easy way. You can just use the salt spoon and detect the salt amount and then control the portion. It takes at least eight weeks to reset taste buds. So Dr. Chung is using a gradual adaptation strategy to reduce sodium slowly. Gradual adaptation approach is really to teach patients how to change their salt appetite by eating raw sodium food. That their taste buds have to adopt the raw salt food. It helps people gradually adapt, but it also over time helps them make foods and eat foods that are lower in sodium because again, it's, been, it's habitual. And it's true, there's been a lot of data that show if once you reduce sodium intake, you reduce that appetite, it stays there for a long time. It's a nice way to do it, short-term intervention that should have long-term outcomes. The same level of sodium intake for a patient with heart failure is the same level that all of us should be eating now. It's really just the recommended sodium for everybody. So that's why it works. It's equally beneficial for both the patient and the caregiver. In UK's pilot study, 15 patients who used the salt spoon reduced their daily salt intake over three months. Family members' salt intake also went down. Family members, when they, they don't know how to choose the raw salt food at the grocery, they don't know how to cook the raw salt food, they actually cannot support our patients. So we have to really educate them together. Food is not just the individual thing, it's just a family matter. With NIH funding, the Family Sodium Watcher program is recruiting 220 patients and their families. The year-long study will track long-term outcomes, like rehospitalization, we propose that we can deliver this kind of intervention using the mini iPad, like video conferencing program, like FaceTime and Skype program. People really enjoy that, getting the education using the video conferencing program. So we adopted that strategy. They say, well, rural people don't have access to the internet. They're, the people you're focusing are old. They don't care about the internet. They don't ever want to get on a computer. And if you really start to look at any of the data, actually, most people in rural areas have figured out how to get the internet, unless you're really, really far removed. There are pretty good services. So all of those initial barriers and fears that people have are really unfounded. Self-care interventions work best if you have some interaction with the patient. Taking advantage of these, this technology has really improved accessibility into rural areas to provide support for people and their caregivers who often aren't part of the healthcare system. And I think we've started to raise the awareness that it's we need to take care of the caregiver as well as the patient. I think it speaks to where nursing is, that it speaks to us to be much more holistic and looking at the whole picture instead of just a single thing. 